Welcome back to the Black and Gold Report again with head football coach Pete Chinnick. Coach, I wanted to, to pick your brain for a minute and talk about the no, no huddle offense, which you which you run uh, uh, quite a bit. Uh, talk about some of the, the the strengths and the weaknesses of the of the no huddle. What's what's the point of it? Well, what we wanted to do, and I, I think a lot of people who do it, is to be able to play at a faster pace than a defense is used to. Uh, I think it's very difficult to simulate uh, an offense running a play every 20 seconds. And so we've kind of set ourselves up to play fast and to be able to get as many plays in as we possibly can. Uh, and we're close to you know, doing what we want to accomplish on a weekend and week out basis. Probably the weakness is um, if you don't get first downs, uh, you're giving the ball back to your defense uh, quickly. And I think we have, uh, in our seven games, we're averaging just over two, three and outs, meaning the offense, we had the ball three plays and had to punt. Um, last week we had one three and out. Our goal is to go a whole game without getting any three and out. So, um, you know, it, it's played to work out very well for us this season, and we're going to continue uh, trying to fine tune it here. So, if you can't get first downs, it keeps your defense on the field probably way too long, wears them out, and perhaps opens up avenues for the opponent then. Yeah, right? and we talked a couple weeks ago about, you know, our defense has been on the field a lot. Um, you know, in the past. And this week, I think, is a great example of both sides working well. Our defense had 47 snaps. Uh, they had a lot of three and outs, and they had, uh, I think they were two of uh, 10 in third down conversions. So they had an 80% success rate defensively. Offense, we ran 75 plays. Uh, we were 50% on our third down conversions, and uh, I think we scored on 10 of our 13 drives, and we punted uh, three times. So not, not a bad process. No, not right at all. Uh, you're still, you mentioned this earlier, but you're still having a few problems on special teams, particularly with extra points. So you've missed 10 over the entire run of the season, uh, three in this game, including, including two blocks. Uh, why are the teams able to penetrate your front line and get their hands on the ball on, on extra points? Where, ironically, they're doing okay on field goals. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it. It's been a frustrating process. It really has been. Uh, we've, we've used a couple of holders. We've used a couple of snappers. Uh, we've changed up some things on the offensive line, uh, protection-wise. Uh, we had a bad snap on one. Uh, we had poor blocking on another. Um, and then we had uh, a high snap uh, where our holder was able to get it down, but by the time he got it down, uh, we had something coming off the edge. So uh, in the 10, they've all been kind of a sequence of snap, mm -hmm. hold, and protection. So we, we have the trifecta of bad things going wrong. I, I know us. it stresses you out a little bit as well because we've all seen instances where a missed extra point comes back to haunt a team, and I know you don't want that to happen to you. No, not again. We, really, we, when, you go, when you look at the winged game, I mean, we, we miss a field goal. That's the one field goal that we've missed all season, uh, and we did botch a, an extra point there. Uh, and if I remember right, that game went into overtime and mm -hmm. could have used those points in regulation, would have been good. Well, let's talk about your next opponent. Uh, this time you're playing the, the three and four Eagles of Carson Newman. Uh, despite their record, this is a team that's well respected in Division II. Everybody expects them to be near the top of the standings year after year. Uh, talk about what the Eagles bring to the table this year. Well, number one, they, they bring a very different offense than we're used to facing. Uh, we saw a little bit of that uh, with Charleston this past week, and that was one of the reasons why uh, we were interested in playing Charleston and putting them on the schedule before Carson Newman. Uh, number two, playing at their place, they're very good. I think if you look at their uh, record this year, uh, they haven't played as well on the road, but they have found a way to play well at home. Uh, and then, like you said, very well-respected team. Uh, Coach Sparks has been around for uh, a ton of years and has, a, you know, has more wins than probably anybody in Division II right now. Uh, so we know we've got to be at our best, and, and hopefully after this uh, last couple of weeks, we're, we're, we're starting to get close to what I think we're capable of doing. Well, tell us a little bit about how seeing the option against Charleston hopefully will help you against Carson Newman. Well, just familiarity with where guys need to be. It's, it's a different type of option that uh, Carson Newman's going to run, but the fit principles are the same defensively. And so anytime you got you know, the option of one back getting it, then the quarterback getting it, and then another guy getting the pitch, it just gets your defense used to seeing what that's going to look like. Okay, uh, real quick, Coach, you have four common opponents so far, Fayetteville State, Glenville State, Winget, Catawba. Do you compare film footage to how you played against those teams with how Carson Newman will play against those teams? And, and is it common for coaches to talk to each other? So in other words, you talk to the Winget coach about Carson Newman uh, to help you prepare for him. Yeah, all the things you just mentioned are all the things we do. We have 
Uh, I think we have every game but their Fayetteville State game. Uh, they have most of our games. Uh, and so we spend uh, the entire week looking for similarities of what we do, of what other people have done, and then how it's going to uh, relate to our guys. And then uh, as you talk to different coaches, you know, what did they see live that just doesn't necessarily show up on film? And they're undoubtedly doing the same thing that you guys are. Well, good luck, Coach, uh, this week. When we come back, we're going to talk to head cross-country coach Gary Acock. So stay tuned.